Step into the ring with a professional boxer for some boxing basics. Learn how to protect yourself and find your fighting flow. These corals have been rescued from an epidemic thanks to NSU. Jump into this group fitness class with Morgan, taste this bowl full of health, and find out how emotions may be causing you physical pain. I'm Hunter Frankie, and that's all today on SoFlow Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlow Health. I'm inside the world famous Fifth Street Gym right here in Miami Beach on Fifth Street, made famous by none other than Muhammad Ali and pretty much any other famous boxer you've ever heard of. And today we're gonna do just that, box with a professional boxer. He's gonna teach me the basics and they have the latest edition, which is Unlimited Martial Arts, where we'll learn martial arts that are good for your mind and for your body. So let's get into it. Daniele, tell me, why do you love boxing so much? I mean, this sport uh, teach you a lot. Teach you, it's like the life, you know, never is easy. You need to train hard and you need to be focused to reach your goal, you know? Right. So that's why I love, I love this sport. And why this gym specifically? The first time I came here in Miami, uh, I came to the gym and uh, I feel the, the energy was so magic. And I still feel the, this energy, so that's why I came here. I want to push myself, so I think it's the best gym. And that's what boxing is about, pushing yourself and getting pushing better yourself. every day. Yeah, better every day, pushing yourself, believe it, and training right. hard. What do you think you could show me uh, when it comes to the basics of boxing? Okay, so listen, the jab is your key. Okay. Jab is the key, so throw the jab. Perfect. Turn and punch with your knuckle. Okay. And keep your hands high. Hands high? This hands high, that's perfect. Close your elbow. Right. Okay. Jab. Yeah. Like that? Jab. So now jab and right hand. Okay. Okay, now throw the hook. One, two, hook. Okay, so one, two, hook. Hook, perfect. Every time you punch after, you need to do like a little squat. Okay. So one, two, three. All right, one, two, three. That's perfect. Okay. So you need to be close. And then it's better, you see it's faster. Right, right. If you punch like that, you right. open. That's so intimidating. Go. One, two, <laughs> one, right. two. Here we go, ready? Let me one, see, one, two. two, pivot, pivot. That's good. That good? was good. Yeah. All right. That was good. <laughs> We're just getting started here at Fifth Street Gym, the world famous Fifth Street Gym. When we come back, Daniela's gonna show me something else, but first, watch this. Did you know that the health of coral reef affects your health and not just the oceans? Well, it does. And today I'm at Nova Southeastern University's ocean campus to find out more about it. So what you guys are looking at behind me here is a, a 30 tank system that houses corals from the Coral Rescue Project. The Coral Rescue Project is a FWC and NOAA sponsored project where we are attempting to collect healthy corals beyond the margin of disease that is occurring here in South Florida. The disease is called the stony coral tissue loss disease, and it's a rapid onset disease that is affecting about 20 to 22 different species of coral. Corals grow along the coast of tropical oceans where they prevent wave action from eroding the coastline. So if we remove coral reefs, we are gonna remove our barrier of protection from that wave energy. Sponges and other organisms that live on reefs are known to have some compounds that may be useful in terms of researching the next uh, phase of pharmaceuticals. It's a very, very large connection between coral reefs and humans. So Hunter's about to go talk with Kyle. Kyle is our guy in charge of maintaining the health of these corals while they're in our intermediate storage. Kyle, Nick was telling me about the project you have going on here. Uh, what is in front of us? These are corals that were rescued ahead of the stony coral tissue loss disease margin. So these corals came from out beyond where the diseased corals currently are. Right. All these are in pristine condition and their intended use is to be first saved from the diseased area. Right. They're going to be used for restoration in the areas where the disease has essentially ruined the reef. Right. This is post disease because effectively what happens is the disease enters the coral and the tissue begins to, to die along the skeleton 
Right. And it peels away. And it leaves this bare skeleton behind. Right. Each one of these names is associated with exact GPS coordinates. So when all this is over and the disease is effectively oh. passed for the most part, we'll be able to put them back exactly to where they came from. These are living creatures. These aren't just rocks. Is that correct? They are not rocks. Yeah. So <laughs> What they do is they have their soft tissue here on the outside. This is that green portion. Uh -huh. And over time, they slowly deposit their skeleton and they leave behind this large carbonate structure, which right. is what looks like a rock. Right. What should people know about coral when they're out? And they, if they go, say they go snorkeling or scuba diving and they're around the coral, what should they know? Please don't touch. They're very sensitive. Um, even, you know, five pounds of pressure, less even, you know, barely anything at all. You can really damage the surface skeleton of these corals. Right. It may seem like, oh, that's a fun idea at the moment. Right. But you could potentially be doing, you know, years of damage to that coral, the scar for it to heal back over. Right. But also you're opening a wound on the colony, especially right now with the tissue loss disease going around. Right. Uh, you're creating a vector for entry of that right. disease into the, an otherwise healthy colony. Right. It's a house, it's nutrients, it's a, many things it's for the It's a storm ocean. buffer, it's fish habitat, it's breeding grounds, it's basically the bread and butter of the oceans <laughs> out there on and the And that's coast. why it's so important that we're protecting them, or that you guys exactly. are protecting them. <laughs> exactly. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for what Absolutely. you're doing. We really appreciate it from a, from a, you know, just an ocean lover's perspective and uh, how it affects our health in the end. Oh, for sure, yeah, it's great. We're back with Daniele. Daniele, what else do you have for me? You need to learn how to move on the ring. Yes. Because you have your opponent mm -hmm. in front of you. This is your position always. Always. Mm -hmm. So go forward, back, left, back. Whoop. Uh huh. <laughs> forward, forward, back. So when you're moving, you're always in open position. You never cross. Yeah, because you, you never could fall. cross. Even if I push yeah, you right, and right. you have your. Your legs like that, you can right. go, you know? So when you start, so say you get hit and you, you, you always want to fall back you in open position. You always have to position. be in position to defense and to right. punch back. Forward. And two. To right. And two. So if you really want to know what boxing is, you got to come to Fifth Street. You yeah. need to come here because a lot of people come here just for fun mm -hmm. and they can train with us. They can train with the professional fighters so they can see, they can see the difference, they can feel for real what is boxing. Daniele, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank I you learned a thing or two for sure. Now, I'll tell you this. No chance I'm going to go in the ring with this guy anytime soon. <laughs> Stay close. Good eats are ahead. Unlimited Martial Arts will have us moving, and Morgan shows us the benefits of group fitness when SoFlo Health returns. Focusing on you, innovations in modern medicine from your team of cancer experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. At age 36, Deborah Padrini was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. After multiple rounds of chemotherapy, she discovered a new lump. I took from all the advice and all the conversations I had with multiple oncologists was this one thing, like the only thing that we will recommend is for you to get your hands on immunotherapy. When a new immunotherapy clinical trial opened up at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, Deborah was considered a perfect fit. I was so happy. It's finally like, like to me, the clinical trial means hope. Immunotherapy has already shown an impact in patients with advanced triple negative breast cancer. We want to bring this into the early uh, stage setting so we can ensure or improve survival. Dr. Francis Valdez is the principal investigator for this trial. This is where Deborah comes once every three weeks to receive her immunotherapy treatment as part of the clinical trial led by Dr. Valdez. This is just one of more than 15 clinical trials now open for breast cancer patients at the Lennar Foundation Medical Center and other Sylvester locations. So it's a very exciting, important study, and we're very grateful that we can offer to our patients here whether it's at uh, Sylvester or if they're coming from other centers in South Florida. My name is Anthony Fontana, also known as uh, Sifu Fontana. Sifu means teacher or an elderly person that is skilled. I'm not that old, but that's what the term, the Cantonese term is uh, actually means. The main uh, martial art that we do teach is Jeet Kune Do. That was uh, founded by Sijo Bruce Lee. But a lot of people don't understand that uh, what he developed was America's only martial art. Jeet Kune Do, what it is, it's a blend of 27 different martial arts. 
So without Jeet Kune Do, we wouldn't have uh, what's known as mixed martial arts today. So all you can throw is the jab, the cross, the jab, and we're just gonna start like this. Block, I block, I block, right? So I'm doing is parrying. I'm gonna do the same thing to you and you do it back to me. So push it out of the way, push it out of the way, push it out of the way. You're going to parry. Okay. You're gonna tonsil, look at your palm, and then you're gonna curve your arm like this. Okay. I'll show you how we're gonna do it. So fire the jab, right. fire the cross, fire the jab. Boom, see I just did what I just did. So, you it's parry. One. You move it, you can do that, exactly, and then, and then open palm. Oh no, what, what, <laughs> I just you got could, You could do it on the outside, it's you okay. You can do it on the outside? Yeah, you can push it, just as long as you're not getting in the face. There's no <laughs> right or wrong way. So, so parry, this way. open your palm, push this it out way. of the way, and now curve, and boom, this way. exactly. There's more to it, like I can show you, come at me again, sure. I can go one, two, and I can hit, boom, what I showed you before, <laughs> right? Or right. I come again, I can go one, one two, two, and I can hit you like that, and break, break your eyes. There's so many different things you can do. Break again, your eye. Or break your, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It takes four pounds of pressure to lose retina, like a whole other thing. So again, I, street, I teach a lot of systems, so that, okay. this is how you have fun with this drill. We all have those lazy days where we just don't feel like stepping foot into the gym. But what's even worse is going in alone. Whether you're lacking motivation or not, taking part in group exercise may just be that boost you need to get you up off the couch and into the zone. Today we are at I Can Fitness. I am here with Dee, the head trainer. We just went through an amazing hour workout class. So I've gone to a lot of gyms myself. I work out a lot, but the energy here, how, how is it different? You know, this is group exercise, but what do you guys do that really sets you apart? All right, the difference between us and a regular ordinary gym is the group training. Here, we hold our clients accountable for their actions. We like to work together. So we here, we push each other. That's the whole purpose of group training. So you say you hold your clients accountable. You know, I saw a lot of them in there. Seem to be really close friends. Has that been something that's happened yes. over time? Like you built a community? Yes, we built a community, a family. A lot of us, with time, we have grown from point A to point B. Now I could see, you know, you, you go into gyms where people, you know, they high five each other, but everyone here, the energy was just way more friendly, way more connected. And when it comes to the workout side of things, is it the same workout every time? Do you guys change it based off muscle group or? No. How does that work? The workouts vary and it depends. We work with all levels. We work with beginners, intermediate, advanced. We tailor the workout to fit each client. Okay. Each time they step in the building, we try to give them something different to challenge, to push them to the limit. So you'll modify things definitely. within definitely the class? Definitely modify okay. inside the class, right on the fly. And I noticed too, which is something I know you lack a lot in group classes, is like there'll be one, one coach. There was a few coaches on the floor here, yeah. checking my form, checking my spots. So that gave me a security that like, I'm good, I have the support I need. Every single class, we have two to three coaches here to make sure the clients are doing the work properly, not stopping, mm -hmm. pushing, motivating. That's what we do here at I Can Fitness. I came in weighing at 252 pounds, and now I weigh 185. So it was a struggle all the way through, but I absolutely love it. Helping others is, is really like the best thing you know, you can do, especially when it comes to the fitness world. Once I learned that eating right and exercising is like longevity, so yeah, I got into it working hard. When you're training, you're really pushing others, you know, you're, you're telling them not to stop, like to keep going because everybody wants to quit, but you just keep going. With the right dose of cooperation and a dash of motivation and inspiration, now I can make the most out of a much needed workout session. The other thing that we did too was the stick and dagger technique that comes from a system called Kali. Kali also means body motion. That is a sophisticated weapon system that originated in the Philippines. This goes all the way through, this goes under your armpit, right? I slash the blade, I come back, then I touch my arm. I hit you with the stick and I step forward, then we step back and we clash again. Boom. Right back to our starting position. Okay. With the stick and dagger, it teaches you how to go in and out of our long and short range, how to get close to the opponent and then retreat. And then also, like we were talking about the, the cognitive training and the, the mental benefits that you get from it, training like this can, in the future, prevent things like dementia or Alzheimer's. And I'm a firm believer in this through studies that continue to happen. Clash. Now, when you train with the knife, obviously, you don't want to engage, you want to run for your life. But why do we train it? We train it to build hand and eye coordination and then also making our footwork faster because you have a shiny object coming at you. Think about it. It's not just, all right, one, two, three, two. It's like, no, wait, I'm hitting high, I'm hitting low, right. I'm attracting. I'm looking at targets. Where am I hitting? So you're constantly working this. And it's and like, you just learned something. How right. do you feel? I feel great. I feel great, right? <laughs> yeah. So this makes you stay sharp. Right.
Bole, bole, bole. Wait, that's not the song, but it is a great place to eat. You know, it seems like we're always out in Fort Lauderdale, downtown Miami, and South Beach, and that's because usually when health and wellness first makes it here, it starts out in the most populated areas to see if it's gonna be successful. However, health and wellness has made it all the way out here to Pembroke Pines with Bole. I'm at Bole with Colleen. Look at this delicious bowl. Colleen, tell us about Bole. So Bole is a 100% gluten-free restaurant. It is a build your own bowl concept. It is fresh flavors, bowl flavors. Our tagline, so fresh, so bold. Mm -hmm. So being so fresh, so bold, we bring in fresh quality ingredients every single day. So walk me down the line. What, what, what does somebody do when they come here? So on your small bowl, you get to choose one base, two veggies and one protein. And then on your large, you get to choose two bases, two veggies and two proteins. Okay. And what's so great about this is you get to make and choose what you like down the line. We did cultivate this menu in such a way that every single thing on our menu pairs well together. Right. Everything is made, prepared in house, using the finest ingredients. Tell me about um, why Bole is healthy and um, what the benefits of that are. Absolutely. So Bole, we, as much as it is healthy, mm -hmm. we like to think about it as it fuels your body, mind, and soul. Right. For those that have celiac disease or, or just a little sensitive to gluten, right. this is paradise for them. Right. And then you go down the line and you just, every single bite that you get, it's just, just wow, you know? <laughs> and yeah. it's great to see our guests, especially going down the line, are like bite after bite, try after try. It's just, man, how did you guys get these flavors on there? So, especially yeah. with nutrient rich food. Talking about bite after bite, I think I'm gonna get a bite when you Absolutely. Here and kind of talk about it. So what you're trying right now is uh, yeah, our lemon everything. chicken. Yep, and black rice. Is that forbidden black rice? Oh yeah, I guess some of that forbidden black rice. We topped it with our minted tomatoes and our curry ginger sauce. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And everything is curated in-house, yeah. which is awesome, you know, from the salt mix that we use. We don't have microwaves here. We don't have butter or milk right. inside our house. And that adds to the fresh Absolutely. portion of all this. It's fast, it's fun, and it tastes great. Colleen, thank you very of much. Of course, my pleasure. I gotta get another bite. Yeah, <laughs> please do. Coming up, a rough lesson in self-defense for me, and you'll find out how emotional stress may show up as physical pain after the break. The second thing that we did was also was known as Suntukan or Panatukan. So that's also street fighting applications where I took his arm and I punched his face and I manipulated his body and I showed you guys a simple takedown. But it's basically how to end the situation within 15 seconds or less because that's basically all you got when your adrenaline's getting the best of you. So I fire my jet. Remember, you're gonna use this to push it out of the way. Push it out of the way. Step in with that big punch. Boom, Boom. hit my face. The elbow pushes me. Boom, yeah. elbow to my face. I'll over and, and wrap. Boom, big knee to my face. Here. Boom, you can do that one too, it doesn't matter. And then throw my head through your arm. Here. And I'm down on the ground. And then I'm down. And there you go. And then that's it. <laughs> okay. Catch. Elbow. Elbow. Control. Whoa, whoa. And then I take it out. We have often heard that our thoughts and feelings can positively or negatively affect our biology. That same mind body connection may also help ease chronic pain. Jason just ran me through, what would you call that, Jason? <laughs> so this modality is called neuroemotional technique, or NET. So what would you say NET is? Start off coming out of chiropractic, okay. where they found that people were coming in for chronic injuries. Why would you have to come back over and over and over again for the same thing? When people would relive a traumatic right. experience, it would send this biochemical response throughout their body, and mm -hmm. they would have to kind of go back in for what they would call an adjustment. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is something different. It's called the neurological muscle test. What we're getting into is we're bypassing your rational part of your brain. Even though you might say you're okay with something in your intellectual, rational brain, there's actually some type of fight or flight response going on right. that you can't talk your way out of. And we can really strategically pinpoint what that is right. and then use the muscle test to determine where exactly we need to go. We find that 90% of the time, emotional stressors mm -hmm. contribute to long-standing physical pain when it should naturally heal itself. First, I'm gonna borrow your arm. Okay. What we're doing is a neurological muscle test. So you know when you've gone to the doctor and they do that like patella yeah, yeah. knee reflex test? Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing, but we're doing that with your conscious, subconscious, and unconscious part of your brain. So what I want you to do is just hold strong for me. Okay. And I'm gonna push down light with light pressure. Good, and I want you to take your first finger and pop it right here 
It's an acupuncture point. It's a okay. polarity point. And what's going to happen as you hold strong right. over here on this muscle test, all of a sudden that goes away. <laughs> so yeah. you can take your hand away one okay. more time. We're going to do that test one okay. more time. So that means that everything's working smoothly. Okay. It's like the second time around, I'm like, I almost want to fight it a little bit, but it, still, it just doesn't. Well, no matter how strong you are, it's mm -hmm. kind of the, the, the fight or flight is saying there's mm -hmm. something going on. Now we don't know what it is. Sure. Right? It could be, again, purely structural. It could be toxins. It could be emotion. Right. It could be just be a vitamin deficiency. If you're really working on an emotional thing, mm -hmm. it's going to be manifesting in parts of your body. It could be digestion, it could right. be stress, it could be anxiety, it could be headaches, it could be lack of sleep. So there's no disconnect in our world between the neck up, right, emotions, and the neck down, body. And right. we really look at it from a comprehensive relational dynamic. Another thing that we did too, we worked on the, the Mukyang Jung, and that's also the wooden dummy, which I showed Hunter John Fon set number three. Again, too, another cognitive training skill. Like you learn a, not a pattern. And then why are we doing this? One, we don't have a training partner. And two, you're learning all the benefits of uh, the parrying and the blocking and the striking. Inside, 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 outside. outside. Chop, chop, pull, punch. Pull, pull punch. punch, yeah, again. Also, it builds um, your muscles pull, up, so it makes your wrist perfect. and your forearms stronger. And it also makes your uh, targeting acquisition sharper, too, because you concentrate on targets where the eyes are, or the neck, or the belly. What you should do is like you're leaving your arms down. When you're here and you do this, yeah. look where my hands are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. This is certainly working my mind, choreography, and it's cool. It works your body and kind of the connection between the two. Absolutely. Ugh. That's it for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. I'm beat. My hands are red, I'm sweaty, and I'm ready to go home. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com and follow us using at SoFlowHealth to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. Thank you so much to the world famous Fifth Street Gym and Unlimited Martial Arts for having us here today and showing me the ropes that aren't just these ropes. I'll see you next week. Next week on SoFlow Health, we're seaside in Hallover, in the lab with more coral at NSU, and inside of an infrared sauna to heat up our workout. Plus, Dan Hellman is back with another strange posture to help strengthen your lower back. And parents of picky eaters rejoice. Monica of Essence Nutrition has some tips to help you add some peas to their palate.